previously on the head of a pen. Atoms are not the most basic things. They can be broken up into electrons, protons, and neutrons, so-called subatomic particles. And those protons and neutrons can be broken up even further into things called uh, gluons and quarks. Our Earth is constantly being bombarded from outer space by high energy particles that we call cosmic rays. There is a famous equation called the Schrodinger wave equation. It's a function that has a value at any point in space. All right? it, might, it might be 10 here and it might be one tenth over there. A German physicist named Max Born and he reinterpreted this wave function. He said that that is really just a probability wave. That gives me the probability of finding a particle at this point at, at this time. Ultimately, our description of nature is just that, a description. Uh, and it's important not to confuse the description with the underlying reality for anything. The basic uh, nature of light has been a, a puzzle for a very, very long time. Newton, Isaac Newton, 300 years ago, was puzzling over whether light had a, uh, a, some sort of continuous nature or was corpuscular. Obviously, the fact that if uh, you, see, you have a source of light, you have a screen, we can make a shadow, right? And that tends to suggest that light has some sort of particle nature. Nevertheless, we can uh, demonstrate that light has wave properties by, uh, you know, sending it through a slit, for example. You'll see it light diffract and create little you know, wave-type patterns that we see only with wave nature. So that, that already started in the uh, early seven, uh, 18th century. But it wasn't until the mid-19th century that... Um, it was realized that electricity and magnetism were related to each other, and one could write down a complete theory of electromagnetism, what we now call electromagnetism. And that was Maxwell who did that, and that was the first unified sort of theory in, in physics. When uh, James Clerk Maxwell took electricity and magnetism, which were thought to be two different forces back in about 1860, and came up with a theory that put them together in the theory of electromagnetism. One of the results of that theory was that he could predict that there was a disturbance in the electromagnetic field that traveled at the speed of light. In fact, this electromagnetic disturbance was identical to light. And the, at least in the visible portion of uh, the spectrum, the electromagnetic field would send out photons that could affect our eyes. And it was until the 20th century that we realized that these waves that, was that were at the basis of Maxwell's theory also had a particle manifestation. Right? That there you could have chunks of light. That was really uh, Einstein's uh, great contribution. That's what he got the Nobel Prize for, not for relativity. All right? Yes. Einstein came up with the theory of relativity and said that uh, nothing, not light, not electrons, not thoughts, couldn't travel any faster than the speed of light. That's the fastest speed that information can travel in the universe. All right? But what he got the Nobel Prize for was not relativity, it was for the graininess of light, that it came in chunks, called photons. How do we go from a description of this type of energy, electromagnetic energy, from being a wave, which is a big continuous thing, the way we think of it, to a photon, which is like a little particle?